Welcome to our lecture online. In order to find the lowest common denominator so that we can add fractions together that have different denominators, we learned how to find the factors of each denominator. But the factors that we saw so far in the previous examples were relatively small, and at least the denominators were relatively small. But if the denominators are very large like this, how do we find the factors of that? So that becomes a little bit more challenging and so what we're going to do here is show you the technique of how to do that. When we have a number like 84, we realize that that number is even. So we know that one factor immediately is the number 2. So what we're going to do here is look at the prime numbers, start with the smallest prime number to see if that fits into that number evenly. If it's even, of course, it does. And what we can do then is say that this can now be written as the product of 2 times well, if you divide 2 into 84, you get 42. That's still even, which means we can divide it by 2 again. 2 will be a factor again, so that gives us 2. And 2 times 21 gives us 42. Now, 21 is no longer even, it's now odd. So we see if the next prime number fits evenly into it, and the answer is yes. 3 goes into 21, it goes 7 times. So the 21 can be written as the factors 3 and 7. So therefore, 84 can be written as 2 times 2 times 3 times 7. So that's how we find the factors of a larger number. The same with 164. We start out by saying it's even, so we can write this as the product of 2 times. 2 goes into 164, that would be 82 times. It's still even, which means we can divide 2 into it again. We get 41. Now 41 is a prime number. You can divide 41 by 2, by 3, by 5, by 7, by 11, by 13, by 17, by 19. It just doesn't work. 41 is a prime number, so therefore 164 can be written as 2 times 2 times 41. When you look at 442, it's a very big number, but you can start with it easily by simply using the smallest prime number and say that this can be written as a product of 2 times, divide 2 into 424, you get 212, because twice 212 gives us 424. It's still even, which means this can be divided by 2, and that gives us a number of 106. Twice 106 is 212. It's still even, which means this can be written as 2 times the number 53. Now 53 cannot be divided by 2, by 3, by 5, by 7, 11. Looks like it's a prime number. And so since it is, we can write 424 as the product of 2 times 2 times 2 times 53. What about the number 1260? Well, again, it's even. We could start with dividing it by 2, but we might make the job a little bit easier by realizing, hey, it has a 0 there. I can divide it by 10. So I can start two separate branches. I can say that here, this can be written as the number 10 multiplied by the number of 126. And then we work each branch separately. 10 can be written as the product of 2 and 5. And 126 can be written as the product of 2, because it's even, and 63. Now 63 is odd, so it can no longer be divided by 2, but it can be divided by 3. So we can write this as the product of 3 times 21. And 21 can be divided by 3, and that gives us 3 and 7. 3 times 7 gives us 21, 3 times 21 gives us 63, and so forth. So now we have all the branches down to the lowest possible factor. So we have the factor 2, 5, 2, 3, 3, and 7, which means that the number 1260 can be written by the of the can be written as the product of 2 times 5 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 7. And so that's the method we can use to take larger numbers like this and find the factors of each. Again, we can write it as the product of the lowest factors that we can find that way. And that's how it's done.